In the last video, we were talking about piano's axioms, and I also gave you an example of how to prove normal arithmetic that a grade 3 student could do, or maybe grade 2, I don't know, but how to prove it, how to prove that 2 plus 3 is actually equal to 5. And if you and if you wanted to know that, and if you are interested in, in knowing that, you might want to go in the video that, I'm, that, and, that I made before this. So in this video, I will be talking about generalized associativity and commuta commutativity. Almost didn't get through that. So addition in Piano's axiomatic system is both commutative and associative. Whenever both of these are true, then generalized associativity and commutativity holds. So what does this mean? So anytime you have you're working in piano's axioms let's say you are working in, in in piano's world so so in piano's world both commutativity commutativity and associativity and associativity Old. And since both of them are true, we say that generalized, generalized associativity and commutativity, commutativity, commutativity is also, is also held. This means that if you have any number, right, and you want to add it together and pair it off in, in with, with a certain order, then you can rearrange that however you want to. And you can break off the brackets, you can do whatever you want. So if you have, so what does in simple language, this means that you can, you can add, in any order you want you want and that's one of the primary things and you can break off you can break brackets and rearrange however you like however you want to okay so that's not a W however you wish so let me give you an example here so let's say i want to show you so the, 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 the example is let's say i want to show you that we have uh, the bra let's put a bracket let's put another one just for just for the sake of math let's put another one then a a plus b close this plus c let's close this plus d and okay let's close this plus e so my question to you is is this thing equal to d plus bracket bracket e plus bracket a plus c bracket bracket plus b bracket so i just told you you could add them however you want to and you can break off brackets and you, you can basically basically do everything that you want to, but you still have to listen to piano's commutativity and associativity. So you can only do one thing at one time. So actually, let's get started off with this. So we have to start with one side. So I'm just gonna, normally people start with, with, with this side. However, I'm just gonna start with this side, just to show you that with an equality, you can start however you like. And it doesn't matter which way you go, as long as either you go from here to here, or you go from here to here. That's the whole magic of this, of, of this generalized associativity and commutativity. So let's actually get started off with that. So we know that it's D plus bracket bracket E plus bracket A plus C bracket bracket plus B. Then what we can do is actually we can move this around. We can we can rearrange this. So we can write this as D 
plus bracket, uh, the bracket, bracket A plus C plus E bracket plus plus B. Now, we can put the plus, if we can do that, then this whole thing can be treated as one thing. Let, let's just treat it as, I don't know, X. D plus X is the same thing as X plus D, right? So what we can do with this is we can put the D, we, we can put the, the plus D at the back like this. So we can have uh, bracket, bracket A plus C, E, B, and then plus D. Now we can actually break off this 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 bracket and we can we can put we can push this this way and we can put this whole thing in a bracket. So what do I mean by that? So let me yeah. So we will have bracket bracket A plus C plus E plus B bracket and then another one plus D. Now what we want to do is we can rearrange them, right? You, we can put them however you want to. Now, one thing that you have to be um, clear about is that you can rearrange them however you want to. That was one of the conditions that I gave you. You can add them, not D. You can add them however you want to, and you can break off the brackets and basically do whatever you want to as, as long as you're doing it one step at a time. If this sort of question comes in, I know it's painful and long, but you have to do all of the steps. If you don't, then you will lose marks. So now we can put a bracket around this, the one that we took from right here. So let me do that. So bracket, uh, bracket, bracket, A plus C. Let's close that bracket, plus B, let's close that too, plus E, and then plus D. Now, we can arrange, we can, we can put these two together, like bracket A plus bracket C plus B, and then let's close that bracket, plus E, let's close that bracket, D. I know this is... Uh, this is painful and you might be thinking why would we do this but if you chose to do analysis then you can't skip over you can't skip uh, steps you have to be very thorough about this you have to show everything that you do and I'm gonna stop telling you what I'm doing because if I hope it makes sense how I'm doing this I'm just slowly one step at a time slowly rearranging putting brackets where they need to be put and this is actually a good 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 point where I should point this out I have just taken this bracket and this bracket and I ha and then and, 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 and twisted them basically and kind of made two terms out of this made two terms out of this in the, like this e plus d and I hope and the, I thought that was cool and and again now I'm gonna switch their order so it's gonna be a plus B uh, plus C then let's close this then D plus E and then uh, we're very close to what we want to this has the same order as, the, as, as this and we finally got to this if you didn't notice notice sorry if you didn't notice this, then I think it's good for me to point this out. We have A here, B, C, D, E. We wanted to get to this point, so we have A, B, C, D, E. So if you look at the previous step, I had E here and then D here. So this is the step where I now have the order correct. So remember how I said that you have freedom in order and brackets? Well, you have just finished uh, with the correct order, so we can cross that off our list. Now let's work on the brackets. So th this means that we are very close. So now we see that there are multiple brackets at the front, so we have to do one step at a time. So let's put uh, this in, and then double brackets here, D, close that bracket, E. You see what I did here? That's that's what I did. That's That's the important part of this step. And finally, I hope you can see this by now. If you if you don't, then well, uh, you can go back or you can stop the video, and then you can see how I got to this. Now, it, this is a big finale. This is why we worked so hard. Um, I'm gonna take this bracket and I'm gonna remove it, and I'm gonna put some right here. So, so let's do that. 
So bracket, 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 A plus B, close this bracket, plus plus C, close this bracket, plus D, close that bracket, and finally plus E. This is what we wanted. Since we got to this, therefore, our, th our proof has concluded. I'm going to put my QED. And just for good measures, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to box both ends of my of my uh, of my proof to show to make it extremely clear that I have done what you have asked asked me for now knowing that generalized associativity and commutativity is true that's a pretty big deal it means that we don't have to be so careful and slow at rearranging terms and brackets and and we will see that with fields because that's where i will be going in a bunch of in in a couple of videos once you have the fields down once you have those axioms in your back pocket you don't need to go through this excruciating method of going oh, well let me put a bracket there let me let me now take it out oh wait i forgot i had to put the bracket there and you don't have to do all that you can actually just assume that commutativity and associativity are a given as long as you can prove that the that the set that the number set that you are working within is indeed a field so fields are interesting in themselves um, however in real analysis we won't be diving too deep into what fields uh, are or we will just be providing you well i will be just providing you with with axioms which which which, which should make it perfectly crystal clear why certain sets are fields and why certain sets are not and i hope this uh, example, you know, just kind of woke you up because you don't want to do this when you are trying to prove sequences or even functions. You want to have something much more efficient and that's what field axioms are for. I hope this video was helpful.